Hello and welcome to the presentation. I'm Kanchana Gamage and today I'm going to be talking to you about loss of control. First, a little about me. I'm a private pilot and founder of the Aviatrix project. I've been fortunate to fly on many different aircraft types in the past six years since gaining my license. I'll be working on adding aerobatic and tailwheel ratings to my night rating and fly as often as I possibly can. I currently work as a STEM engagement coordinator and support a number of organisations with STEM outreach, as well as their diversity and inclusion strategies. Prior to this, I was a head teacher and a lecturer, and I used my unique combination of aviation and education skills to launch the Aviatrix project in 2015. The project is a community interest company focusing on encouraging more women and girls and young people from disadvantaged backgrounds to pursue aviation careers. In addition, I'm an aviation lecturer and a tourism business consultant. The presentation today is brought to you by Astral Aviation Consulting, who are working in partnership with the CAA to provide a general aviation safety campaign throughout 2021. Keep an eye out for their upcoming panel events and other materials on their website, www.astralaviationconsulting.com. You can also follow them on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with the latest in GA safety. The campaign itself has two core safety objectives. Firstly, to raise flight safety awareness within the GA community in order to reduce the risk of preventable aviation incidents. Secondly, to promote a just culture through open and transparent communications in order to increase reporting and encourage meaningful discussions within the community. Raising awareness of key risks and promoting a just culture where people report and talk openly about their mistakes will benefit the whole community and make it safer for all. Moving on to the scope, here is what we're going to talk about today. After covering today's aim, we will cover what is loss of control, why do we need to know about it, and most importantly, what can you do about it? We will then analyse a case study and how this links into the three enduring principles, prepare, plan, perform. We'll then look at some human factors, some key takeaways and the importance of reporting. If you wish to explore further or recap anything discussed today, the presentation, along with some excellent additional resource links, will remain on the Astral Aviation website. The aim of this presentation is to help you to consider your personal preparation and planning and how that affects your performance to help you avoid a loss of control situation. In doing so, this will help you become better equipped to deal with unexpected situations that might arise while airborne and again, help you avoid a loss of control event. Sound preparation and comprehensive planning should lead to a good, safe airborne performance. Do you always prepare well for every flight? Do you always thoroughly plan what you're going to do? Is your performance always the best it can be? Do you reflect on your flight afterwards and consider what you will do better next time? We will explore each of these over the course of the presentation. So what is loss of control? Loss of control is defined as the unplanned or unintentional deviation from your intended flight or ground path. Loss of control can manifest itself as a change in height due to weight turbulence, an upset caused by entering IMC or by attempting to remain BMC, incorrect configuration, vortex ring, pilot-induced or assisted oscillations, unintentional stalling, wing drop or spinning. Likewise, loss of control on the ground can occur due to things such as a contaminated runway due to rain, snow, ice or slush, leading to aquaplaning, an aircraft issue such as mud accumulation in wheel spats, or it can occur as a result of technical failure or omission such as asymmetric thrust or failing to put the flaps down 
prior to landing. Raising awareness of loss of control is important because sadly, in the five years between 2015 to 2020, loss of control in flight events made up 20% of all GA accidents, 44% of all the fatalities and 55% of all the serious injuries accidents. So let's have a quick look at some loss of control mandatory occurrence report statistics. Reviewing the EASA 2015 study, it showed that by far the vast majority of loss of control accidents were due to unintentional buffet, stalling or spinning, and almost 75% of the upsets were during takeoff, approach or the landing phase of flight. This aligns with the CIA figures, which show that of the 104 fatal or serious injury accidents that occurred, loss of control in flight or on the ground was a contributory factor in 75 of them, that's 72%. So what does this all mean? Over the past five years, loss of control contributed to a fatal or serious injury accident slightly more than once a month. EASA have determined that unintentional stalling and spinning are the most common aircraft upset types, and you're most likely to experience a loss of control event during departure or recovery to the airfield. We will now look at a recent case study, loss of control that led to the worst case scenario, a fatal accident. This was the accident involving Super Demona Golf Foxtrot Mike Kilo Alpha in July 2017. So what happened? The owner of the aircraft was revalidating his class ratings. The instructor he had recently completed his training as a civilian flight instructor on single engine piston land aircraft, but did not hold a touring motor glider class rating. The accident flight was the first time that the instructor had flown in a Super Demona. The weather in the area of the accident flight was clear and dry with no low cloud and light winds. Witnesses observed the aircraft in what is believed to be empowered controlled flight until the last few seconds. One witness described what could be construed as the aircraft entering a spin just before he lost sight of it behind the trees. Having now looked at the crash itself, let's see what the Air Accidents Investigation Branch concluded and what you can do to avoid something similar happening to you. The AIB report states that the aircraft departed from controlled flight at low altitude, possibly from a power on stall. The ground impact mark suggested that an attempt to regain control of the aircraft was made, but there was insufficient height available in which to complete a recovery. Touring motor gliders such as the Super Demona have different flight characteristics to the more common SEP land class of aircraft, even though they look very similar. So what can you do to avoid this happening to you? Firstly, know your aircraft, understand the limits and characteristics specific to the class and the specific aircraft. Secondly, plan your sortie. Plan with the characteristics and your skill level in mind. It might take time to climb to height to practice stalling, but better to build in a buffer just in case the exercise goes wrong and the aircraft doesn't recover in the incipient stage. Think and plan for the what ifs. Thirdly, expect the unexpected. You might have 10 hours or 10,000 hours. Things can go wrong, usually completely unexpectedly. And finally, don't push your limits and keep it simple. So what should your priorities be? We have picked up that crew handling error is the foremost causal factor in a loss of control event. But what can you do? Aviate, aviate, aviate. The first number one priority should always be to keep control of the aircraft. The aviate, navigate, communicate model exits for reasons learned from over a hundred years of flying. So if things are going wrong, aviate first. Distractions can be deadly. Many pilots have crashed as a result of prioritizing checklists, radio calls, map reading, cockpit indicators or other non-critical tasks over flying the aircraft. 
Therefore, make sure you minimise distractions and if they occur, recognise and address them. Complacency. Try not to let complacency get the better of you. Expect the unexpected. Trust in your training and skills. Create a plan within your limits and fly the plan. Trust your training. If in doubt, avoid getting into the situation in the first place. Recognise the signs and symptoms and recover the aircraft using the correct technique. Having looked at what loss of control is and some of the underpinning evidence and analysis, we will now focus on how your preparation and planning can enhance your overall performance and help you avoid a loss of control situation. Firstly, are you mentally prepared for your flight? Think about this as something that you do well before going flying, before you leave the house or office. Have you allowed enough time to prepare for your flight? Is there anything distracting you today? Recognising distractions allows you to challenge and deal with them whilst on the ground rather than in the air. Is the weather suitable for my plan and experience level? Do I need to go flying today if the weather is marginal? Is the aircraft that I'm flying today airworthy? Have I thought about my last flight? What can I learn from any of my own experiences to improve my performance on this flight? Secondly, are you physically prepared for your flight? Even if you're feeling slightly off, you won't be able to perform to the best of your ability. If you're not on form, you may well erode your ability to fly the aircraft accurately, utilise a successful work cycle or effectively think ahead. A number of organisations have adopted the I am safe checklist, which is a very useful and handy tool to run through. You can find this in the useful resources section of the Astral Aviation website. Before you set up for the airfield, ask yourself the question, am I mentally and physically prepared to fly? Should I be flying today? Thirdly, let's think about planning. Now let's imagine you've arrived at your flying club or at the airfield and you're now starting the pre-flight plan. Have you allowed enough time to plan your flight? Where are you flying today? What are you planning to do? Try not to put yourself under time pressure. Rushing the plan may well end up in mistakes that are often carried airborne. Is your equipment and software up to date? Are you using pre-planned cross-country routes from the club? If so, check and double check for any changes. Better to spot and correct errors on the ground than try and solve the problem in the air. Make a final check of your equipment prior to climbing into the aircraft. Do you understand the weather? Has it changed since you left the house? Sound preparation and comprehensive planning should lead to a good, safe, airborne performance. However, preparation and planning alone don't guarantee a safe flight. Having prepared and planned well, it may be a good idea to rehearse some elements of your flight with the focus of today's theme, loss of control in mind. This can also be known as armchair flying, where you sit and think through the flight in order from takeoff to landing. Things to think about could include, what are my threats? For example, weather, airspace, other GA aircraft, time, etc. And how will I mitigate them? What are my contingencies? Think about the what ifs. What if my engine fails during my practice force landing? I should plan to conduct this training with suitable fields in the overshoot and prepare for this eventuality by taking provisions to keep me safe and enable me to call for help. A lack of prioritisation is a causal factor for many accidents, especially loss of control. So think about what you need to prioritise and when. If in doubt, avoid getting into the situation in the first place. Recognise the signs and symptoms. Recover the aircraft using the correct technique. So you've landed safe and are on your way home. Is there something you could have done better today? One of the best ways of learning from your own mistakes is to reflect on your flight 
as soon as you can after landing, whilst it is fresh in your mind. Think about what went well, what could I have done better? Should I book a UPRT course or a check flight with an instructor? Was I sufficiently prepared? What did I need to replan for? What didn't go well or as expected? Why? Was my airborne work cycle effective? If not, why not? Did I identify any issues, lessons or mistakes that could be shared? You might have been lucky. One of your friends might not be. Should I tell someone? Should I submit a mandatory or a voluntary occurrence report or a confidential report? Remember that whilst it can be easy to focus on what can be improved for next time, it's also important to focus on what aspects of your flight went well. So you can also build on these for next time. So how do human factors influence loss of control? Remember, humans are fallible. There are countless distractions whilst flying. Passengers, air traffic control, field checks, all take time and mental capacity away from you. We all naturally think we're better than we are, and this bias makes us think we can do anything. I've done this a million times before. What's the worst that could go wrong? Could be etched in the gravestones of many unfortunate aircrew. Try being in an active conversation whilst writing down a copy of a textbook, word for word, with no mistakes allowed. You'll either start writing down your conversation, make errors in the transposing, or start blanking the conversation. This is getting task focused when trying to multitask. Everyone makes errors and mistakes in everything they do because we're all human. Be responsible and report any errors we make as we will help others to learn from them, however insignificant they may seem. Now on to reporting. Reporting increases awareness for all GA operators, identifying hazards and near misses. However insignificant they may seem to you is predictive reporting and will help to avoid a more serious incident or accident. So what can you do about it? Report any and all incidents in a timely manner and include as much detail as you can. If you're wondering what type of report you should submit, there is a guide on the Astral Aviation website, which will let you know whether you should submit a mandatory occurrence report a voluntary occurrence report, a confidential report known as a CHIRP or an AIRPROX. If in doubt, submit a report in any format as more reporting equals more safety and ultimately may save someone's life. Thank you for listening to this loss of control presentation. I hope you have found it informative and thought provoking. But before I go, I would like to leave you with some key takeaways. What is loss of control? It is the unplanned or unintentional deviation from your intended flight or ground path. Why do you need to know about it? Over the past two years, there was an average, a loss of control event approximately twice a week. Loss of control contributed to a fatal or serious injury accident approximately once a month. Unintentional stalling and spinning are the most common aircraft upset types you're most likely to experience a loss of control event during departure or recovery to the airfield. What can you do about loss of control? Know your aircraft, plan your sortie, expect the unexpected, don't push your limits. And remember, if in doubt, avoid getting into the situation in the first place. Recognize the signs and symptoms, Recover the aircraft using the correct technique. Finally, when you reflect on your performance, please report incidents and near misses, however insignificant they may seem, as they may save someone's life. If you want to find out more, head over to the Astral Aviation Consulting website, www.astralaviationconsulting.com where you will find useful links from both Astral Aviation and the CAA on how to avoid loss of control, along with guidance on how to report errors, mistakes, incidents and accidents. 
Astral Aviation would love to hear more about what you think on this topic and indeed any other geo safety topic. Please get in touch through their contact us form on their website or by emailing contact.astralaviation at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn to keep up to date with the latest news and information.